<sighs> Today we'll teach you how to create a beautiful, professional and Hollywood looking chroma key. And what you see around me is not real. Hello everybody, welcome back to this tutorial on how to create a beautiful looking chroma key production. I am Jaime from EMC and today we are going to learn three important things. First, how to plan out everything before the shooting session. Second, how to set up everything on studio, camera, lighting, green screen, everything. And last but not least, we're going to learn how to edit the footage and put it together with the background, how to composite everything and I will teach you some tricks to make it totally right. If you are still interested, let's get into this. Alright guys, I put together a presentation for you. I promise it's gonna be really quick before we take action into the production. So this is actually our uh, action plan. So let me talk about this real quick. So we have here uh, this image that actually you probably recognize. Uh, it's the one that I've used in the intro video. And uh, analyzing how the light works here, we have this window that is gonna work as a key light because uh, the brightest part of these elements over here, the every object uh, is in, on this side and the darkest side is uh, in the opposite way, so to the right side. So our main light is probably this one. Then we have uh, the field light, which is uh, probably a um, light bulb or some other uh, artificial light behind the camera. And over here, we have this wall that is probably bouncing off some light that uh, fill out some shadows over here. So uh, it's important to have this into our plans. Talking about our plans, I put together this drawing. So uh, it represents the uh, light on the image here and uh, the subject that we are gonna record, which is gonna be myself. And uh, the key light, you can have either artificial source of light or if you find a window that uh, can provide this enough light for uh, your shooting, it would be enough. Also, we have uh, this field light, which is like 45 degrees uh, to the left of the subject. And uh, the camera is going to be here. We're going to talk uh, about that in a second. And uh, also the bounce light, if you have an element that can bounce off this uh, light coming from the left it would be a good idea to have an element that can do that. So let's see how it works in real life. This is the camera. Uh, it is a little bit low because uh, the reference or the background image um, makes us understand that it was the position of the camera that, I, that this image was taken. And um, I have here two lights pointing towards where I was seated, so that chair over there. Also a bouncer, so the light reflects a little bit uh, to my face and to my body, so it won't be that dark. And uh, yeah, the chroma key fabric and one light that is actually um, making look more even the colors or the shadows, just removing that much of shadows of the of wrinkles and so on. So yeah, and that's uh, the microphone for better sound. That's it, this is the setup for the chroma key project. So I found this place in my apartment, which is the living room uh, with a nice source of natural light, which is this window over here. And also it has these curtains that act as diffusers. Then we have this field light uh, situated in the same position as we have in the plan. The camera is right here, we will talk about it in a second. And finally, we have a bouncer, uh, an element actually that bounces the light of uh, the window from the right, right side to the left. So uh, this is the uh, bouncer over here and that complete the light setup. Now, let's talk about the camera. And you might wonder why the camera is that low. So to answer that, let's get back to the background image, but this time with some elements that will help us out understanding the perspective of the image. And why understanding that is important? It's very important because you need to compound the background with the footage you're gonna take. So if uh, any of those have a different perspective, your composition would look weird or not natural. So that's why it's important to understand that. 
So one quick tip is to find an object that you cannot see uh, either the top or the bottom, for example, this desk over here. And uh, that would be the height where the, you should place the camera. So that's why I place the camera at the level of this table on the left side. Uh, like that, you will recreate the angle of the camera that took this picture over here. And finally, before editing our footage, let's talk about some camera settings to keep in mind when shooting a green screen production. First of all, let's keep your ISO as low as possible. This will avoid grainy and noisy footage. Your shutter speed should be above 150. This will avoid motion blur and use a flat color profile so it will be easy for you to color grade. And as always, keep your exposure balanced. That's it, let's go to edit our footage. All right, guys, we are now in Premiere Pro and we have our footage ready to be color corrected. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the footage right here. So you may wonder why I am using this footage that looks so bad. It looks like under saturated, underexposed, and why it looks like that and I'm not using another thing. So the quick answer for that is that I am using a color profile uh, on my camera that is S-Log2. It's a Sony camera, so I am using that color profile, which is actually a flat color profile. It's called like that. And, um, but this step is uh, not necessarily uh, a step that you need to follow. However, I will highly recommend to create uh, your footage uh, on a flat color profile so you will have more information to play with. So why is, is that important? Because the idea is to match your footage with uh, an image that you found on the internet or some from someone else. And the idea is to just match the colors and with more information on the colors, uh, of the colors in your footage, you will be more able to match uh, everything up uh, in the final stage. So let's continue with uh, the color correction part. Let's click on this tab. Uh, now we will see that I have here two scopes, uh, the waveform and the vector scope. I find very important to have uh, the waveform here because it's uh, very important to keep track of what you are doing in terms of light. So uh, right here, it gives us some useful information that is clearly underexposed, it's under the 60 mark. And the idea is to spread all the information from the zero level till the 100 uh, mark. So uh, spreading that out will give us a better result in colors and in light. So, and also um, we have the vector scope and this is just to keep track of what I am doing with the color. So uh, waveform is more about light and vector scope is more about colors. So let's uh, continue and let's uh, start with uh, moving some curves. So we will just like um, spread that information all over uh, the scope. Let's bring that up and let's make sure that we are not clipping anything over here. So if you overpass uh, the 100 mark, uh, you will start noticing that over here, you will start like clipping out some whites and also the same happens with um, with the zero level because if you go under that you will start like crushing very badly uh, your uh, blacks let's uh, just see how it works so if you just like go under it you will see just like start losing a lot of information for all so the every shadow is just like just losing and you cannot recover that afterwards now let's uh get back to where we where and uh, let's just add a little bit more of contrast let's just uh, lift up a little bit this mid-tones let's uh, go back to basic correction let's add a little bit of uh, saturation so we'll have more uh, vibrance in colors also let's add a little bit more of temperature it looks a little bit uh, like uh, cold but my skin is not as Cold as that as it is in the image. Also, let's uh, add a little bit of uh, redness or magenta to the image, so we'll have more natural skin tones. And also, let's play with uh, the shadows. So I will recover more information of uh, my hair that is very dark, 
and some shadows that are this are disappeared also let's uh, bring those highlights a little bit down because to recover more uh, information on the on the skin and um, that is looking pretty good to me what do you think also let's uh, add a little bit of uh, sharpen uh, let's uh, add let's add 50 points just to sharpen it out and a little bit of vibrance just to bring more even more the colors of my skin and also and uh, this is very important just to make uh, very contrasty the green with the, the other colors uh, in front of the uh, fabric now uh, let's uh, play a little bit with the color wheels let's bring those midtones a little bit up it's a little, a little bit up so it won't be that dark on the shadows and uh, it looks great for me so it's uh, pretty ready to go and play with it in After Effects but before of that let's talk about how to export a video ready for chroma key first let's uh, click on file then click on export media and uh, this is very important so we need to uh, format find a format that will keep the most uh, of our information. Uh, so something that is not compressing that much our footage. So uh, the one I normally use, it's QuickTime. It's a little bit heavy, but it's always good. So in this case, we are using Apple ProRes uh, 422 and uh, we will keep uh, the other uh, settings as they are. And also let's uh, just use this um, option over here which is uh, use maximum render quality uh, it is just like uh, nice to have and uh, now you decide if you want to export it over here or you want to queue it on Adobe encoder but uh, for the sake of this let's uh, rename uh, our footage that we're gonna export footage color corrected now let's hit on save uh, let's play export all right so our video is now rendered out and we can continue our process in adobe after effects